Hey everyone, it's me, Empress Arcana, and welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Hi guys. So, I am still uh, in Miami. My friend for Christmas got me a portable mic. So, this is how I am doing. I feel a little bit uncomfortable because I have to, like, hunch forward. I'm on a stool. I'm in pain. I'll get to that. But how are you guys doing? <laughs> um, it's pretty funny because... Um, my friend got me this mic. I opened it. It's super cute. It's pink. You know, I love pink. Sorry, you're going to be hearing all the, like, noises around me, and I I apologize. But it's so funny because I noticed that I put the, the little microphone foam thing on top, and then I look at it. It's my favorite shade of pink. My favorite shade of pink is that salmon color. Yes. It's like, think of Kingdom Hearts 2, Kyrie's outfit. That pink is my favorite shade of pink. That's my favorite, favorite, favorite. Uh, anyway, but the thing is, <laughs> I was uh, trying to, I uh, was using it for a TikTok or trying to, and then I realized as I hold the mic, I notice um, I played back the, the clip and I go, this looks very phallic and I don't think I can post this. <laughs> No, I don't need that shit on the internet. I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> I, did, I was just like, you know, whatever. And then I, the, the realization when it hit me as I'm looking at myself and this microphone, completely innocent. <laughs> it's like, what? And then I look at myself and I'm like, oh no, I can't put this out. So yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm using my phallic microphone. <laughs> It's it's so funny. I took some pictures and sent it to some friends, and it's like, look, <laughs> am I the only one that sees it this way? <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I have my 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 first deck, my MVP deck here, um, and I have some Lenormand cards, and I have my I have my Astro dice as <clears throat> excuse me, I have my Astro dice as well. Oh oh my god. Hey, Iro, leave her alone. Yes, so my friend's cat <laughs> loves to mess with my chihuahua. And my chihuahua's old, and she don't want to be messed with. <laughs> She's like, leave me in my little portable, um, mortal, um, like this little thingy. <laughs> she is it's like a little tent. <laughs> I have the little flap, and it's closed, and it's like the cat's just trying to like mess with it. And Nanako's not having this shit. She's like, no, leave me the F alone. <laughs> I don't want friends. I want to be by myself. Um, so, anyway. Um, but yeah, on to other news. Oh my god. After showering last night, I literally slipped. Because my friend has stairs. I guess I didn't realize that my feet were still a bit wet from like, and my sandals and I slipped down the stairs. I am very fortunate that I, I have a, I have cushion and I slid on my ass just down the stairs. <laughs> and so now I'm just full of bruises and like all over, like on my, on my, on my ass, on my hips, on my legs, on my knee. I'm just full of bruises right now. And I'm like, listen, it wasn't a fun time. <laughs> Uh, but I, I am very grateful for my my Latina caboose because I have a cushion for the pushing because of that. Uh, uh, but yeah, either way, uh, how is the collective doing, right? I just wanted to just talk and sorry for all the sounds because I everything makes a sound here uh, or it picks up everything. Uh, but then again, sounds everywhere there's always sound there's always something so yeah oh, yeah let me get some water mm -hmm. but yeah oh my god so um for this empress talks i am gonna just say a, a disclaimer so whatever comes through in this uh in this audio, um, I'm going to try my very best to keep it lighthearted, but 
I have been going through tons of transformation on my journey and realization of um, things that have happened to me the last seven years that I didn't know how, I don't want to say damaged, but I did not know how much damage it did to me and how I have trauma responses to certain things. And even now I'm kind of like, what am I going to do when I get back? Because I have a lot of issues um, and I'm embarrassed to talk about it, but I have a lot of stuff. It's like going from being able to eat, being able to have a way to wash my clothes, being able to not be in the middle of nowhere, as my friend uh, put it, it's like, wow, where you live is completely dark. It's like anyone can just like, you know, end up in Dateline or something. I'm like, listen, <laughs> let's not manifest that shit. Let's like cancel that shit, man. No, <laughs> but it is like, I live in the middle. Of, I live in the middle of nowhere. There's, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, got to be pretty ballsy <laughs> to be living in, in such a, a lot of stuff has happened over there. And I just really, um, I'm working toward getting out of that. Um, but right now I just want to focus on what I can muster, you know, like what I can manage because my, my mental state has been very, I want to say problematic, <laughs> but, um, not in that sense. It's just, I can feel how right now I'm extremely anxious, uh, talking about it. Cause I have been very afraid to talk about it, but um, I know that talking about it helps and this is just one of my ways of coping so I can talk about it. And I realized as I was talking to my friend and I realized how I didn't realize how much of an effect and all these things have had on me, especially this year. I... So yeah, disclaimer on that, whatever comes through. I'm very grateful for being able to eat and have, like my, um, because I would spend days without eating, um, or like either eating very little, very like, you know, very small or not eating at all. So my, my, my stomach is confused. <laughs> um, my system is like, whoa, 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 which one is it? <laughs> so, um, being able to just grab something, grab a snack or whatever is very foreign to me at this point because it just like, I solidified this, um, lack lifestyle that I've been living, not on purpose, but, um, yeah, it, it's, I just didn't realize. And, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, my knee is hurting and I'm sitting on the stool and like my, my caboose is like, listen, you, you, you are hurting. And I'm like, I know, I know <laughs> you broke my fall. <laughs> um, but, um, so this was Christmas day and no, Christmas Eve day. I went with my friend and her friend and we were getting some last minute stuff for, for Christmas and whatnot. And, um, she asks me, what would you like? Can you believe it that I, I froze? I got triggered and started crying, not like loudly or anything, but tears are coming out of my eyes because it's been, I'm not used to being asked. Like I, I have trauma response when, and I know that this is something I need to work on. Um, whether it's via professional help or whatever, that's something that I'm realizing now. And um, because I really didn't realize how bad it was, how I was feeling. I didn't. But um, she asked me and I was like triggered because I've had people in my family ask me in the past, what would you like from the store? And this is family, but I am one person, excuse me, one person, didn't mean to do the pop thing, um, one person in particular in my family. I've, I don't trust in the sense of what do you want because it's always very transactional. Even when I've given everything I have, um, 
in hopes of repaying back, I can't even say kindness at this point because everything came at a price. And that's how my family life has been. It's always been transactional. The mo- the least amount of that was probably from my mom and my dad, despite all the other traumatic experiences I, over- I-, I-, I went through with them. Um, but I know that they loved me when I, and, and it's very hard to come to terms with like, cause, okay. When someone in our lives that, whether it be family, a friend or some, someone, we care for them and they care for us. We assume because of the, the relationship, but then you wonder, and, and with all the things that happen, I mean, we all have things to heal but on a personal note, I wonder if my cousin ever really loved me. And whenever she was trying to help me, was it really that she, it was, was it really coming from her heart? Because the things that she would do to me, the things how she would embarrass me and make me feel like a fool and in front of everyone, all these trauma, these, all these traumatic experiences I went, I underwent with her. I wonder to myself, does she really love me? Because, damn, if this is her way of loving someone, holy shit, can I go (laughs) exit stage left, please? (laughs) Because she blamed me for my mom's death. She blamed me for existing. and, And it's just like, it's so condescending because she's like, no, I love you. And this, all this gaslighting. But then she pulls a fast one on me and then, and like, again, I can't speak for her. I'm just, ex- I'm speaking about my experiences very vaguely because I don't want to be a complete downer. But I think about it. I've had her in my life since I was a kid and there is always this um, resentment toward me and I don't know why. I've never done anything to her. In fact, I've always respected her and I've always wanted to just... um make it okay, you know, like just, and it's been a very hard year because this, um, I can't believe I'm talking about this. (laughs) This family dynamic that I've had, like, you know, since I was a kid, my cousins and all that, I love them dearly. Um, they would be my second cousins because she would be my first. And then she has like, she has four kids. So, but the two, my cousins, George and Brandon, that I've spoken about in prior Empress Talks and stuff, they're, um, they're very special to me. Um, and, but it's been very painful because everyone goes their own way. And I understand that. But it's felt so, because of some big events that happened this year in the family circle, everyone just went their own way. And I know that Back in 2016, when I left Miami again, um, because I had, anyway, I get to the point. Um, back in 2016, my mom had already passed. I was trying to keep, uh, you know, hold the fort here in Miami. Unfortunately, I wasn't making enough and I didn't want to lose the house. So I had to figure out a way to, to not lose it. So my cousins offered to help me and yeah. Um, along with that came a lot of other things, but I, with all my heart, I know I don't feel monetarily speaking. I don't owe them anything. I've given them everything. Sold the house. I gave them whatever was left over because unfortunately the house wasn't completely paid off because it just wasn't. And, um, like I said before, and I won't go into that, but I didn't see a future after selling my house. I didn't want to keep going because my mom was everything. And um, that's that. Um, I will say, with all my heart, I don't feel like that anymore. I want to keep fighting, and I have been. And I want to do my best to help others with what I do. (laughs) 
I, I, I struggle to find a sense of purpose because if I don't have, I don't feel I have a purpose, then I question why do I keep going, you know? Um, <sighs> it's so funny. This, these Empress talks are like therapy. <laughs> so sorry (laughs) um but i i assure you guys i am i'm we're all going through it but i am okay i'm just purging emotions like so many of us are and it's okay i hope that i can continue doing these like while i'm gone over here because i have my ipad i have my phallic mic (laughs) Hey. <laughs> oh, those are my elbows. Like I I cleaned the the counter and it's just making noises. Not that you guys needed that explanation. <laughs> um I want to close chapters like I said prior and uh I'm working on it. I have right now my mind is like I want to find a solution, but I don't have the mental capacity right now to find a solution. I just want to make it to the next day. You know, I'm sure many of us are feeling that way. Um, but by no means that doesn't, everything I've discussed, I still care for my family, what I have left. Cause that's it. You know, I have very little left cause most of them have passed on. But um, I'm very grateful, and I feel that the new chapters that I'm opening up, this new chapter that I want to, I'm making, I've already been making my own family, you know, my own soul family, (sighs) because in my heart of hearts, they're the ones that matter the most. Like, my mom was everything. But my mom's not physically here anymore, you know? And yeah, I can cry and get sad, but I'm aware. But I also feel her in my heart, you know? In fact, not to be doom and gloom here, but my mom passed away December 29th, 2014. So this would make however many years, but this would be the, you know, anniversary of her death. So I think it's quite I'm glad that I'm doing this recording so I can get emotions out and feel better because it always does feel better when we purge emotions in some way shape or form whether it be through some physical activity or we um or some sort of activity speaking into existence uh, like letting it out whatever feels comfortable for you you know um so yeah Okay. Um, anything else? Uh, oh yeah. I'm not used to someone asking me, what do you want? I'm not used to it because I've been conditioned to go with what's happening, not to have wants. In fact, not to even the needs that aren't met. I I feel like I don't deserve to have my needs met, much less having my wants met. And that's something I'm working on. But it's something I didn't realize I was so affected by. And I'm not used to wanting or going for something, going for a goal and seeing it through, even though everything looks bleak. And that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years. I've been more focused on reaching my goals and wanting but there've been a lot of obstacles like life does, you know? So, but I am very much um, focused on seeing things through. That's why I'm so adamant on this transformation for myself because I've not been paying attention to my needs and my wants for 37 years. Not entirely. And I need to Really look into that. What is it that I want? What's going to make me feel good? Better? You know? And not just settle. I don't 
want to settle anymore. I've settled all my life. We are allowed to want. We are allowed to want more for ourselves. And that is why I always feel I have to give that message because I know so many people feel the same way. I feel it. It's a strong energy in the collective. We aren't used to asking for what we want or, or voicing it, having trouble speaking it. Because it's like, why am I going to voice something and then be disappointed? But even through this disappointment, we got to see it as temporary and keep going for what it is, harm to none, harm to none, especially not harm to self. I say this too because disclaimer, you know. But I think it's very important to voice what we want, voice what we want in our hearts and, and share this with others, other like-minded individuals. Those that feel alone don't have to feel alone because there are others even if it's just one person, there is someone out there that's going to catch you on a level that no one else does. I Maybe that's the hopeless romantic in me, but I feel that. I don't feel that we're... I, I don't feel that we're meant to be completely alone. We all want our alone time. That's fair. That's valid. But... We're made to make memories with self, yes, but also with others. And it's and for a long time I've isolated myself. Excuse me. So I feel it's a beautiful thing when we can resonate with another individual and be able to hear their story, be able to empathize, sympathize, whatever just listen sometimes all we need is someone to listen to us you know okay I'm sure there is more but I can always record another one and bombard you guys with updates because why not <laughs> I really do hope that you guys are doing well I'm going to shuffle the cards and see what messages want to come through okay <laughs> I know that there was, I know that there was so much more, but for the life of me, I can't remember. Cool thing is I have more space to shuffle here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else wants to come through. Mm. Judgment again. Judgment has been coming out a lot. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay bottom of the deck is the okay of course wow that's beautiful all right guys let's go i got here the first card i pulled is the seven of pentacles this man this person is looking at something at their harvest when are they gonna bear fruit you know the seven of pentacles is the waiting game having patience and there is this impatience in the realm of communication with the throat chakra because it's the seven of pentacles excuse me, the Seven of Pentacles is next to the Knight of Swords, rushing toward this, like cutting through. It's like, so, okay, this could be a situation where you are waiting on something, but you're feeling impatient and you're wanting to voice something. Voice it out loud. Say it. Say it like you mean it, you know? And then we have judgment, hearing the call. So this desire to voice something is coming in really strong, because judgment is rising from the dead. So this transformation, as I've been speaking about in most of my readings, because that's literally what's coming through. <sighs> judgment. The hearing, the call. Hmm. Sound, the trumpet. So... I'm going to get some Lenormand cards for judgment, see what wants to come through, and then I'll roll the dice. But yes, the bottom of the deck. Okay, so the next one after judgment is the star, and the one 
and the bottom of the deck is the page of cups so for a lot of us wanting that love to rekindle <laughs> all right let's get sorry it's so loud i'm doing it over the mic because i have other things around me and i don't want it to fall hmm. <laughs> hold on guys oh that was that was oh god <laughs> it was like a piece of wrap for like so what the heck so sorry Uninten unintentional ASMR <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Much better. It's not over the mic now. I made space. That was such a sound. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel a giddiness. Yes. I feel something shifting, something lighthearted. There's something so beautiful about the star. When we look at the star in Lenore, um, excuse me, in the Rider Waite, the figure is by the water, you know, like Aquarius, the water bearer. We have the stars in the background, shining bright, full of hope, wishes coming true. And they are completely naked. Like, I feel right now in the collective, I'm not, I, I might do a 2024 reading, um, but maybe something else. But what I see here for now, guys, is that the star is revealing themselves and not caring who sees them. It's finally shining bright, shining your light, you know? Let's get one for judgment, please, judgment. Oh! We got the sun and we got the cross, okay? And then we got, uh, oops, sorry guys. Oh yeah, all right. We got a whole story up in here. So. The sun is shining brightly, but there's a cross to bear. We have been bearing a cross for so long. Okay. We have been bearing a cross for so long. How do we let go of this burden so we can enter the stage, the phase of the star full of love? No conflict, just feeling it, feeling the love and the security. We have the dog also with loyalty, the child, new beginnings. We have the heart and we have a mountain. We want to climb that mountain. We want to get past this hurdle, past the burdens, because what we want right now is just to feel love in every sense of the word, the feeling. It doesn't only have to be like with someone else, but I do see that here. The Page of Cups is a messenger of love, a letter, um, a reminder that you are loved. And it doesn't have to be so serious. It can be lighthearted because the page is... <laughs> um, oh gosh, <laughs> the page is at the bottom of the the court system, the the court card system. <laughs> I always say it like that. And I it's so funny to me. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what trouble did the page of cups get into now? <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna get you out of this trouble, <laughs> page? <laughs> but I see this um oh my god i got the star again but with the lenormand it's the stars that's a road map of being able to find your way the guiding light your true north i got that in another reading there's this beauty this coming together and feeling that even if you feel that your abundance has eaten away or has been non-existent and there's clouds and there's rain and it hasn't been the sun shining, only the snow coming down or the burdens, the cross you're bearing, all of that is coming to an end and you're going to truly fly, open up that book of yours and feel secure to do so. I'm sensing, I'm feeling this gift, this beautiful gift of self that the people that really do care for you, worry for you, want the best for you, love you. They want you to come forth with your truth, however that might be for you, where you feel safe and secure, where you feel that you can rise above everything. That's why judgment is here. Your heart is craving. Your heart is craving for understanding. Your heart is craving to be seen and noticed and loved and I'm seeing like a warm hug because 
you're just tired and exhausted and you just want comfort right now. The collective is tired of climbing mountains or waiting patiently for their harvest. Right now, you just want to feel safe, loved. You want to feel warm. You want to feel... You just want to feel something good. You're tired of feeling so run down and everything going not according to plan. No matter how much you plan, the plans just keep getting messed up and it's so annoying. But what I'm seeing here is an acceptance that even if there are obstacles, even if one has to wait, you're going to come through with this judgment and there might be some form of communication, whether you doing the communicating or someone else is communicating to you, there is this almost desperate feeling of, I want to let you know how I feel and that you are not alone, that you are cared for and loved and everything and you are amazing and I want you to be okay. I want you to be safe. I want you to feel that you don't have to hold back whatever you're feeling. There, there's so much like building up, building up, building up. I've been feeling it for months now. <sighs> Ooh. Okay, let's roll the dice. That was intense. And I'm at someone else's house and I don't want to get too intense here, but whatever. Um, all right. Is this? No, I need the planets. That's not the planets. Hello? my dice as usual. I keep getting zodiac dice, but I need the planets. Here we go. Okay, do we have? All right, I'll roll four. All right, let's roll the dice. Of course. Oh my God. Oh my, oh my. Ooh, guys. Dude, we got Leo three times. Cause I got fifth house, Leo, Leo, and then Pluto. Hear me out. Oh my gosh. This has been coming forth as well, again with the creativity, again with the desire, the passion. This is the strength card. Leo is the strength card in, I, I keep wanting to say Lenormand, in tarot. This is opening up to feeling that you can take a risk with your heart. You can take a risk and you can embrace it. And remember, when we look at the strength card in Rider weight, we have the individual like opening up the mouth of the lion, not afraid of being bitten, not afraid of the consequences that might arise from trying to, no, you tame this part of yourself, whether it be desire, whether it be lust, whether it be not believing in yourself, whatever strength means for you. It could be creativity. It could be the birth of a child. It could be anything because fifth house things relates to the bravery to take a step forward in the realm of creativity, in the realm of dating, in the realm of wanting to build a family, all of this creating, because of four, number four, I see it as the foundation associated with the emperor, the foundation that we lay down and build on this sturdy ground, we build upon it. And then when I see the number five, I also see the hierophant, which is commitment and being able to accept something of self despite society, despite, like, I know that I would refer to the hierophant in reverse as like some form of anarchy, not having, not following the rules, doing it your way. So what I'm seeing here with the Leo energy, it could be a bit flashy. It could be a bit dramatic because Leo is Leo wants to shine. What this is telling me here, fam, is that with this Leo energy in the dice and Pluto, the transformation, the death and rebirth against associated with judgment, the star card is ruled by Aquarius, but the star shines. And I see that with Leo, you are wanting to shine. Someone wants to see you shine. Whatever that might be for you, take what resonates, but you are overcoming these obstacles and not caring for what comes your way. You're going to, there's like this renewed fire coming in for the new year. Like there are still, especially with the heart, because you have been hurt so much in the past that your heart is just so used to the disappointment, but you are rising above that. However, that is for you again, whether it be a relationship, whether it be the relationship with self or another person, uh, your heart is becoming more full with love for yourself so that you can step forward and complete these tasks that you have been wanting to do 
but have been too afraid to do. Finding the courage with Leo coming forth and shining bright like the star of Aquarius. Despite how it can feel scary, it could feel a little bit like... I've, no one else has done this or I've never done this before. The fear of the unknown or like, it doesn't have to be fear, but whatever it is that you're feeling, (laughs) how about that? (laughs) But there is this hesitance. I still pick up on hesitance. I feel that there is this hesitance to shine in a matter important to you, whether it be in a relationship, matters of the heart, there is still hesitance to shine And allow yourself to show that shine, that brightness to someone else, even though you feel so much, feel so much love inside and you want to share it. You want to share it so bad. So that is what I see. That is what I see here, guys. I am going to wrap this up. That was a little too intense. (laughs) I hope that you guys are well and safe and I'll do another one of these recordings in the future. Love you guys. All right. Bye-bye.